President of the Republic of Kenya, William Sumai Ruto, the Minister for Finance, my dear friend um, Badi, governors present here today, my friend James Orengo, Governor of Siaya, my friend Ken Lusaka, Governor of Bungoma. My sister Gladys Wanga, Governor of Homer Bay, and the Deputy Governors represented here this evening, this morning, by my Deputy Dr. Matthew O'Willy, Senators, Members of Parliament, Members of County Assemblies here in present, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored this morning, Your Excellency, to welcome among, among, amidst us distinguished Africans who are leading important institutions in our continent. Professor Benedict Rorama, President of Africa Green Bank, we welcome you and we thank you very much for supporting this investment conference. As my president said, you are the most important person in the audience today because you carry the pass. Welcome to Nukisumo. I'd also like to welcome my dear friend Jean-Pierre elong Basti, who is the Secretary General of the Union of Cities and Local Government of Africa, an organization which has been very, very key in supporting subnational governments in Africa along the lines of uh, Union of Cities and Local Government in the world. We thank uh, Jean-Pierre elong Basti for having enabled us some years ago to hold our cities conference here, which attracted 13,000 people globally, and from which we have derived very, very good programs since then to support not only the local, the county government of Kisumu, but the evolution in general in our republic. I do hope, Mr. President, that it will be possible sooner rather than later as we have discussed with you and Jean-Pierre Longbasti, that the regional office of UCLGA in Nairobi will be vibrant to ensure that what UC, UCLGA stands for in promoting subnational governments in Africa is led from Nairobi under the guidance of Your Excellency. This morning, Your Excellency, we are also privileged, really, to have Shelter Freak which is an important organization in the area of housing, and we welcome the Chief Executive of Shelter Africa among us, and we also welcome those who represent other development organizations, national and international, with us this morning. Your Excellency, Kisumu has been a growing county within the framework of the Lake Region Economic Block which puts together 14 counties around the lake with a total population of 14 million people. Now, the lake is an important factor in our life because it's also an important factor in communication between Kenya and East Africa, particularly Kenya and Uganda and Tanzania. You remember, Your Excellency, when the East African community collapsed in 1978. We, shall, we suffered a, a, a big shock when, um, when uh, the port in Kisumu collapsed with the East African community. When the port was closed in 1978 and the railway station in Kisumu also came to a standstill, the only thing that survived was the railway workshop in Kisumu where the equipment endured the test of time until very recently when it was opened. Now, when I became governor and we went to the lake with His Excellency, uh, former President Uhuru Kenyatta, and we saw the waste that was lying there, it was decided that the port should be revived. And indeed it was. One of the most in interesting things is that uh, we excavated, using Kenya Shipyard Company, as well as Kenya Ports Authority, a lot of vessels 
which had sunk to the bottom of the lake. One of them was a big ship, which had laid there for over 20 years, but except for the software, all the hardware survived. So when it was brought to, to, to shore, Kenya Shipyard Company was capable of reviving it and repairing it to sail on the lake at MV Uhuru 1. This was with the help of the Dutch government, but after the resurrection of MV Uhuru 1, our people learned the science and technology of making ships so fast that the Dutch said it was time for them to go. And Kenya Shipyard has since then built on their own MV Uhuru 2. The two ships are now sailing between Kisumu and, and Uganda, transporting goods. And one of the most important investments in this county, whose goods are transported across the lake to Uganda and Mwanza and so on, is a, is, is a ceramics company here in Miwani, which is very successful and depends entirely on the lake for uh, transporting its goods to neighboring countries, which is an important business for, for both the ceramic plant as well as ourselves. I'm telling you this story, Mr. Assessment the President and the Bank, that communication and infrastructure is extremely important in promoting business trade, not just for subnational governments like ourselves, but also for the East African community as a whole. We have done very well, Your Excellency, to, to ensure uh, that uh, this continues. But I appeal to you, Your Excellency, uh, that trade on the lake, especially uh, by our small uh, uh, fishermen, should be supported. The Kenya Shipyard Company is doing a very important thing or making fiberglass boats now, which we can be sold to fishermen. We in Kisumu County have launched a project for supporting the cooperatives among the fishermen, for improving landing beaches and making the fishermen buy fiberglass boats. Why do I emphasize the importance of fiberglass boats? Because soft wood is no longer viable for making boats. It makes it very possible for the tin inside that the fishermen put inside to rust from the bottom. And therefore, when they go to the middle of the lake and they are fishing, water seeps from the bottom as it rains, and we lose a lot of people on the lake. Lake Victoria Commission, uh, an entity of the East African community, estimates that between Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, those who are using uh, softwood for, 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 for making boats, we lose about 5,700 fishermen in the lake because of the softwood used for making the boats. This is where Kenya Shipyard Company comes very important in making fiberglass boats for our fishermen to save lives, but also to ensure uh, that, uh, that the fishing industry uh, 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 survives. Your Excellency, I stand here on this special day, really, to welcome all of you to the great county of Kisumu, and specifically to this beautiful city nestled by the shores of Lake Victoria I've been speaking about. We are pleased, Your Excellency, and proud as a county government to host the fourth African Sub-Sovereign Governance Network Conference in collaboration with the African Continental Free Trade Area, African Export Import Bank, African Bank, and the United States and Local Government of Africa. We are happy, Your Excellency, because this important conference has raised the status of our city, coming hereby barely two years after we hosted UCLGS ninth summit of uh, Africa City Summit here in Kisumu. It is a clear indication, Your Excellency, that Kisumu is blazing the trail as a leading destination for international trade and investment conferencing. Your Excellency and delegates, this conference is meant to strengthen the role of Africa's sub-sovereign governments to in driving into African trade and investment. The conference will provide a perfect platform for sub-sovereign countries, Kenya included, on the future of sustainable trade and investment. The conference theme, leveraging the FCCA for sustainable trade and investment, a development pathway for African sub-sovereigns, captures the intention and objectives of the two-day meeting we have this week. One of the key objectives of the conference is to foster greater collaboration in promoting trade development and investment initiatives 
among African sub-sovereigns aligned with the African continental free trade areas goals. It is worth noting that Africa's economic renaissance is hinged on unbridling the developmental capacity of local governments and increasing decentralization. Despite the gains made in decentralization in recent decades, African local governments still have low administrative and fiscal capacity to realize the much needed local economic development. For the two days, we will be asking ourselves how we have used our existing networks and collaboration to champion Africa's development to help reduce over-reliance on foreign aid, which often comes with tough conditions. Allow me, Your Excellency, to appreciate Afex in Bank for the formation of African Sub-Sovereign Network as a platform to facilitate the implementation of the African continental free trade area, to promote trade, investment, and industrialization among African sub-sovereign governments. I am convinced that the AFNET, the governments will improve inter- and inter-regional trade on the continent and provide platform for public-private sector collaboration, enhance regional integration, and peer learning. As an innovative tool of the African Bank, AFNET therefore comes in handy to bridge the gap and allow sub-sovereigns to accelerate and improve the quality of economic growth in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, with these opportunities, African sub-sovereign authorities must prepare to expand intra-African trade, investment, and industrialization to help create jobs. I am laying the emphasis on job creation because the rapid urbanization in our continent has brought a crisis joblessness and rise in crime, especially among the youth. We in Kisumu can testify to that. You can see in the newspapers recently that we are being featured as a city where thuggery and criminals are ravaging the lives of people. It's not that bad, but we recognize it exists and it must be dealt with. I'm confident that with the booming trade and investments, job opportunities and quality of life will improve and this criminality and joblessness will also go down. To improve our economies and create more job opportunities, we must invest in micro, small and medium enterprises and integrate them into the African free trade area value chain. But we cannot do all this, Your Excellency, without working together and having close collaboration with our national governments. The Kenyan constitution says that there are two types of governments in our republic. One national and 47 county governments, separate but interdependent. Both levels of government must invest on the improvement of infrastructure as an enabler for economic growth and robust trade. We need physical infrastructures like rail, the new railroad being built from Mombasa to Kisumu, the standard gauge railway. Your Excellency is a must and it has to go to Uganda, as you have promised. Roads, maritime, and energy to spur industrialization. In that regard, the renaissance of the port of Kisumu and admirable growth of the Kenya Shipyard Company before your government and now under your government, Mr. President, we have to invest further in that area to enhance trade and commerce in the Lake region. Your Excellency, this conference will feature an exhibition aimed at boosting local trade and investment opportunities. In Kisumu, we will be looking for investors for high-end projects, which include the completion of a FIFA standard Moi Stadium, which is destined to co-host the Africa Cup of Nations AFCON in 2027. We are happy to announce that our national government is resolute in supporting the completion of ultra-modern Kisumu International Conference Center, which is currently 75% complete. <laughs> this project was started during the Africa City Summit, but was not completed, completed due to shortage of funds then. The completion of both the convention center as well as the exhibition center 
will no doubt give a conducive business environment for private sector investment in a hotel in that area. Mr. President, our guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am wishing you a very happy stay in Kisumu. As my friend Jean Pierre Longbassi has agreed, him and the President, Professor Rama, are prepared to stay here for a week longer. As a host, I'm prepared to host you. <laughs> Allow me, therefore, at this moment to play for you a short documentary showcasing investment portfolios in Kisumu County. Can you put on the documentary, please? Welcome to Kisumu, where opportunity means innovation on the shores of Lake Victoria. As one of the Kenya's most dynamic cities, Kisumu is transforming into an investment hub that connects East Africa to the world. Kisumu's breathtaking landscapes, rich cultural heritage, and warm hospitality make it a top destination for travelers. Kisumu's hospitality sector is growing rapidly, offering everything from nesting resorts to eco lodges. From lake adventures to cultural heritage sites, there is a wealth of opportunities for investors to elevate Kisimu's tourism potential. Investors in hospitality have a chance to create unforgettable experiences for visitors, capturing a market that is ready to expand. Set to host large gatherings and international summits, the upcoming conference center at Mamboleo ASK Grounds will place Kisimu family on the map for global events. It opens an opportunity for an international hotel to be built there. That hotel will provide facilities for conferees and for other tourists and people who come to Kisimu. Healthcare is a priority for Kisumu, and the new cancer center stands as a testament to this commitment. Investment in health infrastructure offers high impact opportunities that will make quality healthcare more accessible across the region. In a milestone for healthcare, Med Aditus is bringing a state of the art pharmaceutical plant to Kisumu, aiming to serve the healthcare needs of Kenya and neighboring countries. Med Aditus, which is a pharmaceutical firm from the US, working together with uh, the Great Lakes University, the private university of Kisumu, a unique initiative where the university and med editors are working together. One, for med editors to start with a pharmaceutical firm. Uh, two, for the university to give it an opportunity for having a faculty of pharmacy where students will be learning as well as working practically in the pharmaceutical firm. This facility not only creates local jobs, but also underscores Kisumu's potential as a regional healthcare hub. If you look at our landscape, almost 70% of the medications used in East and Central Africa are imported from other countries. We looked at Kisumu as very well positioned to have this kind of industries. And because of the location of Kisumu, it is uh, uh, next to the, the lake, and therefore can use as uses water transport. It has an international airport within it. Uh, it is the gateway for East and Central Africa. And so anything manufactured here can easily find its way into the rest of the, the East and Central African countries. The Kisumu Special Economic Zone is designed to catalyze trade and industry. Offering incentives and infrastructure tailored to business needs, the Special Economic Zone is gateway for investors ready to tap into East Africa's growing trade landscape. A good example is the Keda Ceramics International Money Factory, a 160 million USD plant dealing in ceramic styles and sanitary wear production. Efforts are underway to improve power stability, accessibility, and other infrastructures. By investing in manufacturing, stakeholders can harness the power of Kisumu's skilled workforce and assess East Africa's expanding markets. 
Kisumu's passion for sports is undeniable, and the proposed international stadium at Moy Stadium will elevate this love of sports. This project opens doors for investors interested in sports infrastructure, youth development, and community engagement. This FIFA style of FIFA size stadium requires substantial investment but also good returns. The vast waters of Lake Victoria hold tremendous potential for Kisumu's blue economy. From fishing and aquaculture to waterfront recreation, investments in sustainable lakefront development are reshaping the way Kisumu interacts with its greatest natural asset. Our permanent around Lake Victoria that provides a tremendous opportunity for leisure and for investment in hotels and other entertainment facilities. Kisumu's agricultural landscape is a vibrant sector driven by rich soils and innovation. With opportunities in crop production, agri-processing and modern farming technologies, Investors can help meet East Africa's demand for sustainable food production. Our three main agricultural products, both for the domestic and international market, are rice, cotton, and sugarcane. Kisumu is becoming a digital powerhouse supported by tech hubs and a generation of innovative minds. The city's ICT sector is ideal for investors looking to nurture startups, expand e-commerce, and create smart solutions for a digital world. As Kisumu grows, so does the need of reliable water infrastructure. Investment in water systems supports agriculture, industry, and households, enhancing the resilience of the entire city to meet future demands. Kisumu is not just a city, it's a vision for Africa's future. With opportunities across tourism, healthcare, green energy and more, we invite you to be part of our journey. Come invest in Kisumu and help shape a sustainable, prosperous future. Having seen that X-rated movie, could I not call upon Jean-Pierre Longbassi, Secretary General of UCLDA, please to come and address the audience. Jean-Pierre, Karibu. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, sir. Your Excellency, the Governor of Kisumu County. Your Excellency, the President and Chairman of the Board of African Export and Import Bank. Your Excellency, the CEO of Shelter Africa Development Bank.